Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the Program.s tab on the Nexion IDE. This is the tab that I'm talking about right here. It has some stuff already in it, and we'll go over that in a minute. What I have is I have two pages, and on page one, this is just a label. Let me know I'm on page one. This is a number field that is set to be local. And then this number field over here is set to be global. Other than that, there's really not no difference. And then this button will take me to page two. When I push this button, all it's going to do is increment this number field by one. And then on page two, even though it's labeled page one, I'm just calling it page two, I have a number field and this is set to be global. And the only reason I have it global is so we can go between the two pages and it will hold its value. I have a button to take me back to page one. And then on this one, though, I do a little bit different. I'm incrementing this number field down here. But I'm also incrementing the page zero or page one number field, the one that's set to global and one. And I'm writing to the ROM location 10. I have a video on this, and I'll put a link up in the upper right corner and in the description in case you want to go back and see it. But I'm not going to go over the, uh, the ROM in this video. I'm going to run this now just to show you how it works before we mess with the Program tab. When I push this button, you'll see that this will increment. And that's all it does. It doesn't do anything else but that. But we're going to take it up to 10, or 11. Now we'll go to page 2. And now when I add this, it's going to increment this button, or this number field, and it's going to increment the one on the other page, and it'll also write it to ROM. So for right now, we're going to increment it four times. So now when we go back to page one, it should be sitting at 15. And it is. At this point, we're able to increment this number field with two different buttons. And there'll be a reason for that, because I want to be able to change this button differently or this number field differently so you can see the change. In the program.s tab, they have an integer set here, and then they have three variables set, sys0, sys1, and sys2. And this, these are global variables that you can use anywhere in the program. And I'm going to dig into this a little bit deeper as we go. And then down here, though, this is the page number that you're going to go to initially. If I change this to 1, and I run this in debug, it should go to page 2. And it opened on page 2, because this is really page 1. I just have them labeled that way. What's interesting is all the global variables that you set have to be set as the first line up here. This up here is, a, is just a comment. And if you were to read this, it says that at present in the program.s field, all you can do is set variables to be of integer type, four byte integers. If you know much about the Nexion, that's all they have. If you want to use the string type, you have to do that in a variable that's dedicated to a page made global. But the last line that's run is this page selection. And when it's run, you can't do anything else. So all of the code that you put has to go in between this and this. And we're going to get into that and I'll show you, I'll do some different uh, examples with it in different spots and you'll see that sometimes you get an error, sometimes you don't. But what's kind of interesting is you can set your own variable here. So I can set enter oh, integer and I can make it be, well let's just try a, a word. If we put in covax and we set it equal to 50 and we do a compile, you get an error because that's an actual instruction. And so that's a good thing that it errors that way. But if I want to set it to cheap controls, let's say, and I do a compile, you can see that it works just fine. And now what's fun is you can use this cheap controls anywhere. So you could assign your own global variables up here. So if I want to go to page one, and let's say on my pre-initialize event, or post-initialize event, I want to set n0.val equal to cheap controls. And you can see it even comes up as a tooltip. 
And now we'll, we'll debug it, and you'll see that N0 is set to... Oh, I've got this still set to go to page 2. You can see that it's set to 50. So then you can use those, those values you set anywhere in the program. But you can also set the value here. So we can say, once we've created the value, we can say, since page 0 has a global value of n0, or of n1, dot val will be equal to cheap controls. Now if we compile this, you can see that it works. And now if we debug it, it should set both the values equal to 50. Because on page load, it's going to set this one to 50, and then our code, our program S, is going to set this one to 50. But let's just change this back to 0. And you can see that they're both 50. But if we delete this line here, so it's not doing anything, and instead we decide to set, let's say, n0 dot val equal. And we compile this, we'll get an error. Because in this code up here, you can only set global values. I don't believe the page is considered created until we run this command down here, until the end, until we've called up the page. It's in some sort of a preprocessor um, state. So it's created all the global variables, but it won't work with local variables. The other thing that you'll get an error on is if I copy this, I'll just delete it. We have access to these system variables, and we have them all set to zero, but let's change system one and make it 10. So we know we can set page zero dot n1, because it's global, equal to cheap controls, but we should also be able to set it equal to system. So now that should be set equal to 10, but when we compile it, we get an error down here, and it says the global variable definitions must precede all code. So this command here has to be above this command here. Now it will compile just fine. And if I run it in debug, you can see that this is now set to 10. So the order matters quite a bit on this. But you can have some fun because on page two, so whenever we press this button, we set this number field, we increment it, and then we set the ROM location 10 equal to it. So in our program S, we could, we can take that program S and initialize this N1. We can't do N0 because it's not global, but we could set N1 equal to that ROM value. That's the repo command. So you put what you want to set, and then you put the memory location. We're going to override it because we're setting it here to system 1, and then we're instantly overriding it. But it should come out, and we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to restart it once to make sure that it works. So you can see it's set to 4, so hopefully that's where the ROM location was. Um, but what we'll do is, is I can increment this and set it to, let's say, 12. Then let's go to page 2. And when I press this button, I'm writing this in there. So let's increment this to 5. And let's go back to page 1. Even though this says 17, the ROM should be 5. So if we close it and reopen it, this should be 5. What's nice about the debug on the Nexion is it retains those ROM values between sessions. I did run this on an actual display and it does work fine. I just thought for the video it would be easier to show you in the uh, simulator or the debug. I had a question about using this command and that's what spurred on this video. And you can do other things in here. You can set colors. So we can set page 0 and 0 BCO equal to red. 
course, it's going to fail, I believe, because it's not set to global, but we can make that change. So let's compile it. And it did fail because you can't see it, but let's go to the display. And let's just change this to global. And now it came just fine. So now the background of this should be red when we run it in debug. And it worked. And now just to show you another little thing about this is if we take this line and we cut it and we put it down here and then we compile it, you can see that it compiles just fine. But when we go to run it, it won't work. It doesn't turn it to red. That's because everything below your last page, or actually your first page, doesn't run. If I added this command down here, it's going to go to page 0 and it's never going to go to page 1. I'll run it right now and you'll see that it's, it goes to the first page, page 1. So in this program.s tab, once it sees its first page, that's where it stops executing its code. So in the program s file or tab, it has to start where you create your global variables that you can use anywhere, and you can call them pretty much anything except for names of commands. Then you enter your code, and you can run about any piece of code you want, but it has to only be tied to a global type of object. And then you execute your page. The thing I don't like is I wish that it would give you an error down here. But I guess since this is a valid command, it, it says, OK, you can put it there, but it doesn't execute them. So once it sees this page, it's over. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.